Hey there guys, Buddy here. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at catchment and river management. River management is a process of controlling and protecting rivers and their catchments to ensure sustainable water use, prevent flooding and reduce pollution. Now in simple terms, it's all about looking after our rivers, ensuring that they stay healthy for everyone and by everyone I mean animals, people, the environment. But what is the importance of managing drainage basins and catchment areas? So firstly, it's going to ensure a sustainable supply of fresh, clean water for domestic, agricultural and industrial use. Now remember, a lot of communities are going to use river water for drinking, cooking, bathing, etc. Right. And if it's all going to be polluted, they will be getting sick. They're going to be dying. And that's why it's so important for us to preserve the river water and keep it clean. Secondly, it's going to prevent soil erosion and siltation, keeping rivers and dams clear. Now remember when soil is going to be washed away into rivers, that's going to clog up your dams and it's going to reduce their capacity, right? Thirdly, it's going to assist in transport. So basically, um, the transport of people and goods via boats. It's then going to reduce the risk of flooding by controlling runoff and improving water absorption. Remember, good river management is going to help your rainwater to soak into the ground instead of rushing straight into a river, which can cause your flash floods. It's going to protect ecosystems and biodiversity in rivers, wetlands and surrounding areas. Remember, if you're going to have a healthy river, that's going to support fish, it's going to support birds and it's going to support plants. If the river is going to then be polluted or damaged, those ecosystems are then going to collapse. It's going to improve water quality by reducing pollution and managing waste. Remember, that's all going to keep the water clean and safe for people and nature. It's going to support agriculture through reliable irrigation and healthy soils. Is going to promote economic stability by ensuring water for industries and communities. Because remember, many industries are going to rely on water. Some rivers are used to generate hydroelectric power. And remember, that's going to help us to reduce the use of fossil fuels. It's going to help with climate regulation and maintaining natural vegetation cover. And rivers can be tourist attractions and can host activities such as fishing and canoeing. Remember, when these rivers are nice and clean, they are going to attract tourism, right? People are going to want to spend time there. And that's also going to create jobs and bring income to these local areas. Now, what is the impact of people on drainage basins, right? What impact do we have on these drainage basins? Firstly, you can have urbanization. Now, that's going to increase impermeable surfaces, such as roads and buildings. And that's going to cause faster runoff, flooding and reduced groundwater recharge. Remember, with lots of roads and buildings, the water is not going to be able to soak into the ground, right? And when the rainwater cannot soak into the ground, it's then going to increase runoff, which is going to lead to flash flooding, which will damage your um, buildings. Now, obviously, we know farming is very important, but if we have too much irrigation or if we have your poor farming methods, then that is going to cause your soil to wash away, which will cause rivers to fill up sand. Deforestation, so that's the removal of trees, and that's going to reduce your water absorption, right? And that's going to lead to high runoff, soil erosion and silted uh, rivers. Remember, people are going to remove trees and when trees are removed, the land is not going to be able to absorb that rainwater, which will lead to, you know, your increased runoff and your soil erosion. Wetlands will be destroyed by human activities like pollution and farming. Remember, factories are going to dump chemicals and waste into these rivers, right? And that's going to cause pollution and the degradation of aquatic ecosystems. And when these factories are going to discharge waste into rivers, Obviously, that's going to pollute the river with chemicals, that's going to poison your fish, your plants, and it's going to damage the entire ecosystem. Now, mining runoff can also contaminate rivers with heavy metals and alter natural flow patterns. Remember, mines also release acid, right? You acid mine drainage, and that's going to increase the acidity of your rivers, and that's going to harm your plants, your fish, and it's going to affect um, the safety of your drinking water. We have your overgrazing, which is going to remove vegetation in specific areas. And this is going to reduce the infiltration, right? Which will affect the amount of groundwater available during the dry season. Remember when too many animals are going to graze on one area, the grass and the plants are all going to be destroyed, right? And if there's no vegetation, that means that the water is not going to infiltrate into the ground properly. That's going to reduce the groundwater levels during your dry seasons. Dam construction is going to alter your natural river flow it's going to affect ecosystems and it may reduce water supply downstream. In terms of waste disposal, the uncontrolled dumping of household or industrial waste is going to pollute rivers and it's going to harm aquatic life. People can also get sick 
from this water. When people are going to dump waste into water, that's going to pollute the water and it's going to spread diseases. And sometimes a whole community is going to use that water. That means that the whole community is going to get sick and die. The over abstraction of water, excessive water withdrawal for domestic, industrial or agricultural use reduces river flow and can dry up streams and the introduction of alien species. So non-native plants and animals can disrupt the natural balance of rivers and catchments. So basically, plants that do not belong in that area are going to outcompete the local species, right? And that's going to change the entire balance of that whole ecosystem. So what are the different types of river pollution? Firstly, you can have your industrial pollution, right? And this is waste and chemicals from industries, including heavy metals, toxins discharged into rivers. Now, this can be accidental or it can be deliberate. So deliberately means that these factories are going to intentionally dump waste in order to save costs, right? Accidental industrial pollution can be just a small spill or a leak, right? Something that happened unexpectedly. Next, you're going to have your domestic or your household pollution. So things like sewage, um, detergents and household waste entering rivers from towns and cities. You can have your agricultural pollution, which is runoff of fertilizers, pesticides and animal waste into rivers, causing nutrient loading and eutrophication. Remember, eutrophication is basically excessive plant growth. And that's going to reduce the oxygen within the river and that's going to kill fish. So soil erosion from deforested land, overgrazing and construction sites leads to siltation in rivers. Remember, if there's a lot of sand in the river, it's going to make the water muddy and it's going to reduce its depth. We then have your thermal pollution, which is hot water from industrial processes or power plants are going to raise your river temperatures affecting aquatic life. Remember, the high temperature is going to lower oxygen levels. That's going to make it hard for the fish to survive. We have your oil and hydrocarbon pollution. So spills from vehicles, refineries or transport are going to contaminate water and harm ecosystems. Now, what you probably don't understand is that the spills from vehicles are going to form sort of a thin layer on the river surface, right? And that's going to block any oxygen and that's going to harm aquatic life. We then have plastic or solid waste pollution. So things like plastics, uh, packaging and other litter accumulating in rivers, blocking flow and harming wildlife. I'm sure you have seen images of these turtles that have plastic caught around their necks. So what is the impact of that river pollution? Firstly, we have your human health risks. So contaminated water can cause cholera, dysentery, typhoid and other waterborne diseases. Secondly, you have your loss of aquatic life. So pollutants such as chemicals, heavy metals and plastics are going to kill fish, plants and other organisms. Thirdly, you can have your ecosystem degradation. So rivers are going to lose their natural balance, affecting wetlands, riparian zones and biodiversity. So pollution is going to cause the water in a river to become unsuitable for drinking, irrigation or industrial use without any costly uh, treatment. Economic losses. So fishing, tourism and agriculture are going to be negatively affected, reducing income and jobs. Remember, no one wants to go fishing in a river that's going to be heavily polluted, right? Nor do you want to go swimming in that river. We have eutrophication, so that's excess nutrients from fertilizers are going to cause algae blooms, depleting oxygen and killing aquatic life. Remember, these algae blooms are going to block sunlight and that's going to lower your oxygen levels. So what are some management strategies for these rivers and the catchment areas? Firstly, we have your afforestation or your reforestation, right? So planting trees and vegetation along riverbanks and in catchment reduces erosion, improves water absorption and it stabilizes soil. Remember, planting trees and grass along rivers are going to help to hold the soil together, right? And that's going to slow down your water flow, which will increase infiltration. We have your controlled grazing. So managing livestock near rivers to prevent overgrazing and soil degradation. Thirdly, we have your buffer zones. So create a buffer zone close to rivers as this will prevent industries from being built too close to these rivers. Pollution control, so implementing waste treatment banning industrial and domestic dumping, and monitor water quality. Remember, if you're going to monitor the quality of water and if you're going to test it often, you are going to be able to pick up any crucial changes before it gets beyond saving. Remember, we have your river rehabilitation. So that's basically removing your alien plants, cleaning riverbeds and restoring the natural flow to improve ecosystem health. Fifth will be building dams. And that's going to help control floods, store water and regulate river flow for agriculture and domestic use. We have water conservation, so encouraging efficient use of water in agriculture, households and industry to maintain sustainable supply. 
Remember, we need to encourage everyone from household to farmers to use this water much more efficiently and that will ensure that we have access to this clean water for a long time. We have your education and awareness. So teaching communities about the importance of rivers and sustainable practices. Again, we can have your awareness campaigns. We can teach farmers sustainable practices that will allow us to conserve the rivers. We have legislation and enforcement. You need to encourage strong laws, policies and penalties in order to prevent pollution, right? So implement things like heavy fines for dumping into rivers. That's one huge way that we can ensure we keep our rivers clean. And lastly, we can recycle waste instead of dumping it into rivers. Now that's going to reduce the amount of waste that will be entering our rivers. And in doing so, it's going to protect our ecosystems. And that's it for today, guys. Just a quick, simple video. I hope this video will help you guys for your exams. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys being here. All the best for your tests and exams. May God bless each and every single one of you. Remember, stay cool, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.